here at Oshkosh, day two, we've come by to look at a handsome new bush cat from Skyreach. Skyreach is South Africa. We're in Wisconsin. I'm from Florida, and this gentleman here is from Canada, so that's a pretty global affair we're having. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm speaking with Chris Horston, who is the, I think, fairly new representative of this airplane in Canada. Is that right, Chris? That's correct. When did you get going with it? Well, it's a long journey, Dan. It started three years ago, uh, but the uh, the demands for planes here in the U.S. were so great that we couldn't we couldn't get any for Canada yet until <laughs> this year. So. We're finally there. We finally got our approvals and our registrations, and so we're we're moving ahead with uh, with the Bushcat. How it is? You can have this airplane, which is a light sport aircraft in the United States, in Canada, which doesn't currently have that category. Yep. Well, Canada actually has a very uh, easy process for bringing an aircraft in under the Advanced Ultralight Aircraft category, which is similar to the LSA category. Um, now that's been around a long time too. It has been it around not? for a long time. Before it's, the LSA category. You bet. Yeah. Probably the biggest difference is that we've got a slightly lower maximum gross than the LSA category. Okay, so, that, that the lower gross number is to fit in that advanced correct. ultralight category that Canada has correct. and has had for a long time. You bet. So here we're allowed to be 1,320 pounds or 600 kilos. What is the number you have to max out at Canada to qualify under that? So in Canada, it's 1232 for, for pounds okay. and it's 560 kilos. Okay, yeah. so that number, uh, some of our viewers might notice, that number sounds vaguely familiar. That was actually the very first number LSA talked about and then they bumped it up a little more and got to the 1320, but that's a number that's used in Europe and other places. Yes, that's right, and that's where we probably got it from. And, um, and then, of course, then we came up with our own uh, processes to get it uh, to get it approved here. Now it's the same aircraft, is it not? Identical aircraft. So it does have 1,320 pound capability. You just can't use all that in Canada. That's you right. You got to take it down by what is that? Uh, 88 pounds something or something. Like roughly, yeah. And uh, I think my math is good on that. That obviously takes some payload away from it compared to what a U.S. person can do. But if the yep. aircraft was originally built to that, I'm guessing that it really didn't change it much to just placard it. That's yeah. all you did then. You just said, well, it's not that, it's this. It's 1232, correct. And you can't load it higher than that and all yep. the rest of that stuff. That's right. Yeah, so, um, I mean, that was one of the reasons why we chose this one, because it had, um, compared to many of the LSAs that we're seeing today, uh, less of um, less of a gro of an empty weight. And so, Do you know what the number is, by the way? 703 is where okay, they start. Okay, so 703, there's a good reference point there, because many of the oh, uh, fiberglass, carbon fiber, welded steel, whatever they are, airframes, tend to be around 800, 800 pounds. Yeah. That's a common number. They're not all that way, and it depends on how That's you have right. them equipped. So, And there's nothing wrong with that number. They've got a higher weight they can go to. But because you're 100 pounds less, you're really not losing anything compared to another airplane that weighs 800 empty. That's right. So, and that, and that, was the, that was the whole, that, you know, that was one of the reasons we chose this airplane, uh, in addition to some other reasons, but because it, it, we wanted to bring an airplane in that was going to be realistically usable in Canada without breaking the rules. Okay. Well, tell me some of the other reasons then. Well, that, all that technical stuff about governments and rules aside, what else attracted you about this particular airplane? Well, for sure, uh, I mean, the durability of it, it's plus six, minus four uh, for G rating. Um, the fabric, which I'm sure you've talked about before in your other interviews, is really durable. Uh, it's a trilaminate um, a material that you know won't, has a ripstop built into it. Won't it won't tear? I don't know um, if the camera can see it, but this whole leading edge up here is composed of what looks like a lot of little squares, and that's that ripstop. Rip if it does have a tear in it, a stick or whatever, it doesn't tend to go anywhere. In fact, right. it's darn hard to yeah. try and tear it by your hands. Yeah, and you could just stick a piece of duct tape over it and continue flying without really worrying about, you know, being stuck somewhere and not being yeah, able to Yeah, it's home. not going to travel back and yeah. cause you a big problem later on. So it's really durable. We like the idea that there was a tail dragger version available because in Canada, you know, we tend to have some guys who like to fly off airport and in the bush. And I've got a lot of inquiries coming from, say, British Columbia and the East Coast where, guys, where the airports may not be as well, uh, you know, as improved as they are in Ontario. And so uh, they wanted something that, that could do that, could handle that. Uh, so the, that was the one of the big reasons. The reason I went with a tail dragger right from the get-go is, Dan, look at it. It just looks oh, I know. phenomenal. I, I don't know if every pilot agrees, but many certainly do that a tail dragger's got a kind of a sexiness yeah. to it. And as someone pointed out to us yesterday, this is what's called standard gear. This is what it was yeah. first. That's right. Tricycle came along later, and yes, it's very good for landings. It tends to go toward the nose wheel, and it's better for students. I don't doubt that for a minute, but 
Boy, it looks good this it way. Does. It looks but you great. can have this either way, right? You can. In fact, our intention is in the spring to bring in a nose gear version so that we can put it into a training school and have students start Perfect. training in it. And then you'll then they'll see this one and go, well, I think I and want that one. Then you can do one. some transition training. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to close the door down here. Can I do that? Is it uh, it's propped up into position there a little bit? But I want to show you this because this is a, a kind of a new door on it now. And it's, I don't remember this part before, which is the door latch, of course. Yep. This seems like it's a new feature to me, but before we get to that, we don't have to close it all the way, but you can see there's a little extra structure here. Some of the older ones didn't have, uh, it didn't look quite this way anyway. And for some people, the, the, the door vibrated a little bit. I never really noticed it, but I guess it bothered some people. So this sort of solves that, plus you've got more room, right? This is a new door, a new, completely new door design. It seals up a little better than the one before and um, it gives you an extra six inches, three in each side oh, wow. of the okay. cockpit. So That's you get six more inches of cockpit space. Do you know yeah. what the cockpit width is then? Do you uh, have that number? I believe 47 and a half. Okay, great stuff. Did you fly the airplane down here? Uh, well, <laughs> so here's the, here's the little catch. Um, I don't have a tailwheel endorsement yet. <laughs> okay, um, you need I've some been, of that transition training yourself I then. do, I've Good been working you. on that uh, back home in Ontario. And uh, so I flew up, I flew the plane up here with an instructor. Okay, so, but, but you did fly in the yes, airplane getting here. And, yep. and you certainly wiggled Absolutely. the stick a little bit. Oh, I, I, so I, tell I, me about the experience. How yep. was it to fly the Bush Cat? Solid in the air, really stable. Uh, the visibility is phenomenal, as you can see all over. Um, everything, like I say, ergonomically falls right to hand. Um, you know, it's, it's a really enjoyable plane to fly. I, I, I knew I was going to love it. I, I flew it uh, in the circuit here and it was maybe at Sun and Fun, which is so quick. And yeah, the weather right. is usually choppy and bumpy and it's hard to get a good feel for it. But uh, on the way up here, spent an hour and it was just fantastic. I'm yeah. guessing that flight was a lot smoother than the one because you got 100 airplanes in the pattern, they're yeah. chewing the air all up and you spitting it out. It. And so you got it's. It. If it works there, that's pretty good, but yep. it's not what you want to do all the time. So yeah, for sure. But uh, and so an hour flight. What kind of cruise did you see in the airplane? About a hundred miles per hour. Hundred miles an hour. Okay. Yep. And um, and what engine are you running up here? That's a 912 ULS. It's okay. 100 horsepower. The carbureted one then. Carbureted okay. one. Yeah. So you're a new dealer for the product. When did you get started with it? Uh, well, for the Bushcat, it's been about three years. Three years. Okay. Um, so you've had time then to measure the response of uh, your fellow Canadians. What do we, they think? We've had a lot of interest uh, in it so far and uh, uh, we, we've been you know saying just hold on till we get our papers in order and our certifications in order before we place any orders but uh, now that we've got it we're good to go we're taking we're, you know ready to take orders right away. Great so, great yeah. well I'm sure you'll find some success with it. We talked about gear and I see this has got these sort of uh, what I like to call big boy tires on it but these aren't just the uh, formless balloon tires that some, you know, the Alaska, big Alaska tires, they're great, but you know, this has actual treads and stuff on it, yet it's a great big tire and, and a pretty big tail wheel on it. I mean, you could use this in some fairly rough conditions. You bet, and I'm looking Within forward limits, to trying course, that but, as well. Um, but if you want those Airstreak, uh, those big 27-inch tires, we, we've got those as well. You've got those as well. Clearly, and, uh, you have all the room you need for it, so uh, that wouldn't be an issue. Um, but you've got one more option for people. Tail dragger, lots of tire size differences, nose wheel if you want it, but also floats. We do. So in Canada... Now Canada's got a little water laying around here and we there. We do, so. and we've had a lot of float inquiries for Canada. Have and you? Interestingly enough, the floats are made about two hours from where <laughs> we live uh, in London, Ontario. They're by Claymar. Oh, uh, Claymar floats. And uh, beautiful okay. floats. So for our Canadian viewers, where are you located? Well, at the moment, um, this aircraft's going to be based at the Brampton Flying Club, which is uh, just outside of Toronto. Okay. And uh, we're, it's, a, it's a very busy training airport. Uh -huh. uh, we're looking to relocate to the Edenvale Airport, Edenvale. which is just a little bit further north and uh, has a lot more recreational sort of activity happening there. All right, so I think I've asked you a lot of questions. Anything you want to add that I failed to ask you that you'd like to bring out about your business, perhaps? Well, um, this airplane will be back in Canada in the next few weeks, and I would love to show it to anybody who's interested. So great. Well, you, talk, you mentioned a new web address. We'll put it on the screen. Just tell us what it is, Chris. So you can either go, if you're looking specifically at the Bushcat, you can go uh, bushcatcanada.com, or you can go to our, our more global site, which is, uh, when actually they both go to the same spot, but it's sportaircraftbrokers.com. Okay. All one word, no spaces.
All right. SportAircraftBrokers.com. And we have a toll-free number. It's one 733-8432. And we Yankees can call you on that you number, too? You can call too? me on that number, too. All right. We'll yeah. look forward to doing that. Yeah. You'll hear more about the Bush Cat because there's always exciting news from these folks and all kinds of affordable aviation you can find on ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for joining Chris Horston and myself here at EAA Adventure Oshkosh.